Hello and welcome to the presentation about Quarkus, its APIs and the way they collide and break and how to handle that. My name is Lukáš Karici, I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat and uh, this presentation is pre-recorded so I should be somewhere in the chat round and uh, you should be able to ask questions. We have a lot of ground to cover so let's just jump right in. So imagine you're like me, you're working on a large software project with a lots of dependencies uh, that, you know, are very complex uh, graph that uh, is interdependent and uh, making upgrade, upgrades there usually breaks something at least. And, uh, you know, f fixing that is a lot is a lot of frustration to go through. But frankly, most of the time stuff works and it's it's wonderful. Uh, so I'm talking here about library APIs, obviously, not about uh, REST APIs, but just the application programming interfaces in the oldest sense of the word. Um, so uh, this presentation should be about Quarkus. And uh, from a very high level, Quarkus is uh, just a tool or a runtime that you can build your applica uh, application with and it provides you uh, using its extensions with a set of libraries that you can use in your application and the extensions of Quarkus uh, do the magic of uh, build time uh, you know, in initialization, augmentation of, of your code, bootstrapping, such that the resulting uh, code is uh, faster and uh, provide or consumes less memory than it would if you just used uh, libraries uh, with uh, a common Java runtime like uh, some EE server or Spring or something. Um, so where are the APIs here? Obviously. Uh, the Quarkus core needs to provide uh, some API to the extensions so that they can instruct it how to do the build time initialization and uh, code augmentation and bootstrapping. And there are also APIs between your application and the libraries that the extensions provide to your library. Um, so yeah, the extensions, as I said, uh, provide uh, the APIs to you and consume the API of, of uh, Quarkus Core, and there is a lot of them. I counted 187, but I'm sure there's more. And uh, the thing is that every upgrade of the third-party library that uh, the extension provides to your, uh, to your application can, in theory, break the API because of the third library breaking the API. Uh, so you as uh, extension author need to be very careful about uh, what and when you upgrade and you need to make sure that uh, you don't break your use Quarkus users with that. Um, Quarkus Core, as I said, provides the build, build time augmentation and bootstrapping and is used by extensions to uh, do this magic. So there are many moving parts in the API of Quarkus, uh, mainly because of the extensions and the third-party libraries that they bring into the picture. So, you know, releasing a new version of Quarkus is uh, usually uh, uh, quite a complex juggling act between uh, providing new features and fixes and, and not breaking the API. So it would be nice if there was a set of automated checks that would prevent, you know, accidental changes and human error you know, in this uh, complicated process. So there happens to be a tool called RevAPI or RevAPI, however we want to pronounce it, that I've been uh, developing for the past seven years. And it provides the API checks to uh, the users. It's got a Maven plugin, a third-party provided Cradle plugin, and it's mainly uh, geared towards library authors uh, so that, you know, during your day, daily work, uh, when you're developing new features and fixes, you're reminded during the build that you've, your changes are breaking the API so that you can make them an informed decision about whether to do that or not. Um, for that, it's got, uh, as I said, um, integration with uh, the build tools and it's got the uh, reporting capabilities so so that you can then you know provide some summary of the changes that uh, that uh, 
your new version of the of your library is uh, is making and it's it's not just about java code it's uh, going beyond that currently into yaml and json and with that uh, let's see a demo of how revapi works within quarkus and what it provides to to it So let's put ourselves uh, in the shoes of an extension developer and uh, I've taken Flyway extension of Quarkus as an example. And um, let's see how our, how, how our you know, daily work would, uh, would look like with uh, API checks in place. Um, in Quarkus, there, there is a profile that you need to activate um, for the API, API checks to kick in, and that's what we are going to use here. So I know that uh, the Flyway extension has uh, upgraded the Flyway library uh, since uh, 1.10 release of Quarkus. So let's now, let's imagine I just upgraded uh, to 7.3 as a, as a developer of the Flyway extension, and I want to make sure that um, Everything is still okay API-wise, so I'm gonna run Maven with Verify. I'm gonna uh, activate the API check profile. I'm not inter interested in tests in this case. And uh, here I'm saying that I want to check dependencies. That's something that uh, the Quarkus configuration for RevAPI switches off by default because it, you know, uh, when uh, Quarkus uses many of its uh, uh, modules interdependently, um, it uh, it produces basically false positives. But in case of extension, I actually do want to check my dependencies, my flyway library that I'm exposing. So let's switch that on to true. And um, uh, because uh, RWP integration in Quarkus is still a work in progress, I need to manually uh, specify the base version I want to compare against, in this case 110.0 final. Um, otherwise, the default uh, behavior of RevAPI is to use uh, the latest released version, i.e. the latest non-snapshot. So let's run this and see, uh, see what uh, we get. Hi, Lucas from Future here. I'm speeding up time so that we make it to the presentation time limit. Thank you. And we see that stuff failed. Uh, we see that there are some methods removed in Flyway API configuration. Another one of those, uh, another one of those. I'm not sure, for example, if this is, I don't know Flyway, so maybe this is okay. Um, but again, this is not the point um, that I want to make. I want to make the point that you know, there's a tool that makes you aware of these changes. Uh, there is uh, a method signature change, but it's somewhere in internal um, packages. So that's this is possibly okay. And uh, another one in inter internal. Okay, so what are we going to do? We you know we upgraded to seven three flyway um, flyway library, and uh, we really do want that. So, you know, we take a look at, uh, at this list of uh, API breakages reported by RevAPI and uh, decide what to do with them. For example, here I would say, you know, changes in internal, in, in, a, in classes that are considered internal by Flyway, I guess we should just ignore those. So, uh, to do that, we need to tell uh, Rev API to just not even bother with these. And in the Rev parlance, th this is called filtering. So we are going to filter out um, anything in an internal package of Flyway. So let's. Uh, let's go to our. IDE, and um, now we are going to tell Rev API to just ignore everything in internal packages. Um, I think this should happen for any version of uh, 
of, of uh, flyway extension. So we are just going to put this in uh, right in the in the POM uh, file of, of the flyway extension so that it, it uh, is applied uh, always. Um, so I've prepared what we need to put here. So let me just paste that in and I'm going to explain what this all means. So we are configuring the RevAPI Maven plugin and we are modifying the analysis configuration. We want to, we want to filter out uh, certain, certain uh, you know, types uh, from, from, the, from the analysis. So analysis configuration is basically configuration for all the RevAPI extensions that are going to be uh, running. So one of them is uh, RevAPI filter and we are going to uh, filter elements, meaning you know classes, methods, or fields, and we are going to exclude. And uh, this is a new thing that is uh, that has been just added to to Rev API after like two or three years of me working on that. And this is very, I think, quite advanced filtering for for Java. This is specifically for Java, and we are saying that we want to exclude any type i.e. class, interface, annotation, enum, that of which uh, the full qualified name uh, matches this glob pattern. So org, flyway, whatever, uh, and there, there needs to be an internal package and uh, any type after that. So with this in place, let's see what, what we get uh, if we rerun the, the analysis. Oh, of course, uh, it's not flyaway, it's flyaway DB. Sorry. Okay, so these internal, uh, the, the changes from the internal packages uh, of flyaway are gone, but we need still to, you know, justify these changes. And uh, The way I want to do this is that I want I want the, uh, our users, the users of Flyway uh, extension, to be aware of these changes. You know, because we are upgrading, we are uh, providing the Flyway uh, library to the user application, and so the user, when upgrading uh, the Parkour extension, uh, should be aware that uh, that brings along some consequences uh, in Flyway as well. So the way to do that is, is not to filter out these elements, but to basically uh, make them reported or documented, but not breaking the build. So the way we uh, want to do that is uh, in, in Quarkus, um, there is a setup to provide like external files that can provide changes uh, that have been deemed uh, necessary per version of uh, of the extension or the module in in, in question and uh, that file should be located in the root of the module uh, that that uh, is uh, exposing those API changes and the file should be called API changes XML. And uh, the way it's set up in a uh, Quarkus configuration, um, this file should have versions as its uh, root element, and then each child element should have the version uh, that those uh, those uh, changes uh, are relevant uh, relevant for. Now, in the development version is always uh, 999 snapshot in in Quarkus. So, this is the way we uh, it's currently set up that we need to reference that version. Uh, it's not ideal, and <laughs> we will probably work on that, but that's the way it is right now. And uh, we want to say that. We need to um, change the classification or change the way 
certain differences found by Rebappe are reported. So there is an extension of Rebappe called Rebappe differences. So we, we will need to configure that here to um, basically take these changes into account but not break our build and uh, so the way we are going to do that is um, to consider all of them as documented um, which uh, the configuration uh, is set up such that documented changes are not breaking the build and uh, it would be good to give a justification for these changes so let me just paste that in from my notes so we are just going to say you know we think these API breaking uh, uh, changes in Flyway are okay and we want to move uh, forward with them any, uh, even though they're potentially breaking your code because we don't think uh, you know that's gonna either happen or that it's really necessary so and then we are going to list the differences um, if you look here at the build results uh, Revapi during when it found uh, found the problems it outputs some suggestions what to do with them you know for example here it suggests that we should ignore uh, certain uh, the, the change of uh, removal of this method from from uh, flyaway api now we don't want to ignore it because that would make it disappear from from reports and from the build also we want it documented so we are not going to exactly use this um, but we can we can just copy paste this here and uh, Did I copy the item as well? No. And we can move, you know, ignore this. On. Um, so this is saying that now uh, we are going to document this change instead of us breaking on it you know the method the removed method this concrete method is going to get documented and we're we're fine with the change and we give a justification for it we gave it here so we don't need to repeat it here and the same thing for uh, the rest of the changes so let me just paste that in from my notes and we, if we save this file and rerun our analysis or build, we should get no errors and our build should be green. Yes. So the build, uh, build succeeded. Uh, so everything that we configured a RAPI to ignore or document has been accepted and um, you know what, uh, there's been quite a few changes in the API um, and this extension is, uh, is uh, supposed to be stable and uh, I'm personally not too uh, comfortable with the amount of API changes that are happening in Flyway even though they may be, you know, well-intentioned and everything but, uh, you know, I want to give certain API stability guarantees and those changes don't, don't allow me to do that. So let's just demote this from a stable extension to a preview and run the build. And what I want to show you here is that Ravapi is not um, limited to just Java API checks. Uh, it's slowly moving uh, you know in other directions as well and one of those is the ability to check you know json and yaml files and, and stuff like that and when we are when we are talking about the integration of uh Revapi checks into quarkus we realized that you know there's a good 
potential for writing custom extensions just for Quarkus. And uh, we've start, just started experimenting with that. And uh, one of the results is that we have a dedicated Quarkus extension for RevAPI. And what it does currently is kind of simple. It just looks at this Quarkus extension YAML file and reports the changes there. And so here you can see that, you know, it uh, breaks the build because you've changed the status of the extension and that's that has consequences and therefore should be documented. So again, we want to document this change. Now we've done that before. Uh, so let's just uh, continue doing the same thing. In API changes, we want to document that we are changing we're documenting that we've changed the status. So again, with this in, um, the build should succeed. Yay, it succeeded. So that's all too good, you know, for, for me as a, as a developer during my day to day work, I can upgrade what I, what I need and I'm, I'm kind of pushed or forced to, document the changes that I'm making uh, in uh, as, a, as a RevAPI configuration now, but you know, that's, that would be kind of um, bad if, if, if stuff ended there. Uh, we want to have a way of reporting all those changes and reporting uh, our justification for, for letting uh, some of the API changes through. So, Again, the, the configuration of uh, RevAPI in Quarkus has been set up to produce reports. And uh, those are put um, into a target uh, of, the, of the module uh, that is being built. And um, one of those reports is a JSON report that just will list everything about the found differences that RevAPI knows about. So if we look at this file, um, we can see all the differences that, that we've seen before and maybe even more of them that were not deemed breaking the build before. Like for example, let me find that. Yeah, here uh, there has been some method added in Flyway API, but adding a method to a, file, to a class is not, uh, is not a breaking change. So this didn't break our build, but it's documented. And because it's not breaking change, it doesn't have any justification because we didn't provide any. And uh, But the changes that were breaking the build and that we needed to uh, put into our uh, uh, RevAPI configuration have the justification here in the report that uh, that we entered in the configuration, and you know this is saying that you know uh, removing the method from from a class is a is a breaking change both in source uh, as a source incompatible change as a binary incompatible incompatible change, um, but still we we thought that this should go in our our release, so, so this is no longer a, a breaking change, but a documented change because we said so. As you know, our authors of the extensions, we have full power to do that. And these are the details that uh, that uh, Ruby provides about the about the change. And so, with this JSON file, basically the intention that we have in Quarkus is to use this JSON file and basically work with it further, you know, produce different kinds of, of reports, uh, which is easy to do if you, if you have a, a JSON file that you can then programmatically uh, massage, you know, whatever way necessary. Um, another report that is being produced um, is basically just for human review. It's a, it's a ASCII doc file that gets built um, and this just you know this is the same thing only in a 
as a as a ASCII doc as a ASCII doc document. So if you want to take a quick look as uh, on the rendered output. Um, so this this has a lot of work <laughs> to be done on this, but yeah. So you you see that uh, the the reports are not just um, limited to JSON or whatever, but uh, they can also be nice graphical uh, human human readable, readable things. Yeah. So. Basically, that's that's all I wanted to show you. Uh, we have API checks. Uh, we can uh, leave out certain stuff from analysis altogether. We can uh, document uh, certain API changes such that they are still uh, known uh, or documented, uh, but they don't break the build. Uh, we, do, we are not limited to just Java checks, but uh, we can also check uh, other types of of uh, of files like for example you know de uh, certain descriptors in YAML or JSON uh, there's a plan to check uh, the configuration options that uh, uh, Quarkus exposes uh, for for any changes you know that's uh, that's going to be based on the annotations that you put on the on the configuration classes in your in your extensions code uh, there could be other things there could be something like a pico, pico cli extension for revapi that would look at the annotations that uh, pico cli is using for uh, you know command line arguments and then you would have uh, api checks on your command line arguments there are many things that uh, we can do and then we can then more importantly report on uh, so yeah that's it. And so, and we've seen all that in uh, running in Quarkus, but this is still a work in progress. We have uh, many great plans with it uh, to make it really nice and, uh, you know, smooth experience. So, yeah, looking forward to the future. Maybe you will want to help us out. And so, as a final note, let's let's ride the wind of change in the APIs. Smoothly. Because that's what, what you want. You don't want surprises. Here are the links. Uh, uh, Quarkus is obviously on its uh, homepage and is a great project. If you want to take a look at Trevapi, I would be thrilled. My name is Lukasz Krejci and I thank you.